Okay, this is veneering the top. Now I've already put the piece of uh, figured sapili as, as my center. And uh, I don't know if you can see it on there, but I've laid out uh, center lines going this way and this way. And I'm actually making two of these so you can see the progress on one. You can see this one. I'm going to put in the diagonal uh, sapili veneer. And this is quarter sawn ribbon stripe sapili so that it gives the effect that everything's pointing towards the center. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that on this one. So the first thing I want to do is cut a couple strips. A predetermined width in this case about an inch and a half maybe a little more and it's not real critical you need to get close but it doesn't have to be perfect at this stage okay and then I just slice this veneer with a razor knife I'm gonna do that one more time. So that's cut right at 45 degrees. Okay. So we're going to take this piece to go here. And I'm going to let this overlap here because I'm going to recut this piece. I'm going to let that be a little bit longer. I want to cut my veneer right there at 90 degrees. Actually, I want the piece I'm going to use underneath the square. This piece will fit there. Cut my other ninety degree piece. nick the corner a little bit. You have to be careful which direction when you're cutting this, but it's not going to matter because the banding, the inlay banding that I'm going to put in there later is going to cover that up. Okay, that fits perfectly. That's what we want. Now we take some veneer tape, and I like to use the old-fashioned veneer tape, the kind you moisten. Seems to work better for me. Hold that together. Okay, then I'm going to mark these corners very carefully. And I'm going to cut those at 45. Okay, we'll stop. Okay, you'll notice I've gone all the way around, and the last piece, of course, is always the most difficult piece. So what I've done is I've cut this 45, 
like this. So it's exactly 45. And it's a little bit too long, maybe a half, a quarter of an inch or so too long. So I'll put that piece in so that this 45 joint is perfect. Okay, then this piece is underneath this one. So I'll take this piece right at that joint and I just want to score it a little bit with my razor knife. Okay, then, oops, cut on there. I'll cut this the rest of the way under a, a metal rule. Should have a pretty good fit. I do. Okay. Go over here, tape those, and we'll be on to the next step. Okay, I forgot to mention it before, but you notice that I have scotch taped these pieces as I was going along to keep them aligned correctly. Otherwise, the veneer is so thin it'll move. Um, so I've got it, this basically what I call just a frame. And later on, we're going to inlay banding along this line. Right? And then we're going to inlay some stringing along this line after we put another frame around here. So these, this fit here along this line and the one that will be later along this line are not critical. They just need to be close. Uh, so now what I want to do is just mark a pencil line all around the perimeter of this where the glue lines, where the glue is going to go, as you'll see in a few minutes. Okay, I'm ready to apply the glue, and I'm not going to bore you with this whole thing, but basically what I'm going to do is to spread this glue, and this time I'll use a, a brush, because I want to try not to get the glue too much on this centerpiece. The more glue you get slopped on your project while you're doing it, the more cleanup you have later. So try not to get that on there too bad. But anyway, oh, also you'll notice that on this little frame that I made, I have an arrow. And I have an arrow on here so that I know that it's going to be properly aligned when I glue it. That's important because it probably won't fit right the other way. Okay, so I've got all the glue applied. Now I'm going to take the masking tape off. frame down going call keep that from messing the back up and I will clamp this down with C clamps in a little while these spring clamps are not going to be strong enough so I'll put about eight or ten C clamps around the perimeter of that Okay, I've taken this out of the call after I did the edges. Now I put just straight grained uh, sapuli pieces and framed this the same way, using the same procedure as, I, as we put in this. And uh, glued it in, clamped it in the call, and that's done. Okay, now this overhangs a little bit. It's a little bit. 
longer so you trim this off on all four sides and Sometimes when you do this, your veneer will chip out on the edge a little bit. And also I take a block with some sandpaper glue to it, clean that up. But it doesn't matter if it chips out a little bit because we're going to round this over later with a router. So any irregularities you have on this edge are going to disappear when we do our uh, router round over. Um, we'll take the veneer tape off now and just by wetting it with with a little bit of water, peel, peel the veneer tape off, let it dry, and then the next step is to actually do the banding and the stringing. Now the banding, we're going to put a quarter inch wide ebony banding here along this edge, and we're going to put some stringing around here to cover this gap. You see there's a, just maybe about a 32nd or a 64th of an inch gap right in there that will go away whenever we put our banding in there.